Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to my magic set review for the new set Ravnica Allegiance. I decided to uh, dive deeper into magic again, give you a proper review for um, Constructed and Limited as I do with my other games and I plan on doing like 12 to 15 cards per video part. So currently for the monocolor cards that's, that will usually be two parts with 15 cards each and then we'll see how we split up the multicolor cards probably by guild in one or two videos depending on how the cards uh, best break apart in uh, yeah parts um, so i'm going over like general limited uh, power level and playability and give you my opinion on constructed mainly standard but also uh, some notes on modern I will ignore legacy and vintage uh, play or other casual formats like Commander, um, of course. So um, yeah, we're going to start with the first half of the white cards. So let's dive right in. Okay, so first off, we have Angel of Grace. Um, yeah, Angel of Grace, to no one's surprise, is a limited bomb in limited a five cost five four flyer that also has flash is amazing then the ability to basically uh yeah punish your opponent for alpha striking for lethal just playing this um making the um making the alpha strike not kill you and then most likely killing them on the backswing also having the ability to just exile it to go back up to 10 health afterwards if it died somehow to removal and stuff like that just gives the card a lot of impact in various ways and it's just really really powerful i think the card is good enough that i could totally see it making it a constructed at least in standard in modern it's probably a bit too slow as at five but um who knows like it could even be interesting in the sideboard of like blue white control and modern possibly um in a similar role as Cards like Baneslayer and Lyra have been, although this does a bit different things, but it, for example, can uh, help against certain combos and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely a card that is fairly pushed and therefore could even be interesting in modern in a slow deck like Blue White Control. Um, all right, next we have Angelic Exaltation. This is basically a Sublime Archangel without the body, which is clearly a lot worse. But, uh, and therefore not a constructed card at all, like Sublime Archangel was kind of a constructed card in standard, I think, when it uh, was in standard. But yeah, in uh, limited, I think this is still going to be a fairly solid card. Like if your uh, deck has enough uh, creatures, goes reasonably wide, this seems like a great tool to break through. Or especially if your deck has, say, some... Uh, units as uh, some creatures to hold the ground play defense and you have like this one solid flyer that's not even that big and not that uh, huge of a clock or could easily be stalled out by opposing flyers then ex angelic exaltation make sure you can just break through in the air and win like it seems like a great card in these like blue white style flyer decks which we might see from azorius in this format so yeah in limited i think this should uh, should be a pretty good card. Not 100% sure, always depends a bit on how the formats play out and all, but the effect is uh, still very powerful and um, sure the fact that Sublime Archangel brings this effect for free is really powerful, but Sublime Archangel is such a limited bomb that I could totally see an enchantment version of the Exalted still being very powerful because, um, yeah, a lot of the time this seems really strong. It also uh, should play pretty well with the afterlife mechanic from Ossov, uh, from Ozov, because it both gives you um, sometimes even multiple bodies, making your board wider. It gives you small flyers to benefit from this boost. And it also, if it doesn't give you multiple uh, flyers, still makes sure that your board keeps a certain size, even if some of your creatures are dying. So yeah, uh, should be a strong limited card. Uh, next we have Arcway Angel, another card that I think is um, 
meant for limited and doesn't have any constructed appeal. But in limited, this is really cool. We already had these like uh, gate themed cards in uh, Guild of Ravnica, and there was some uh, nice fringe draft archetypes around heavy uh, heavy guild drafting and like multicolor decks. And this is no difference. A six cost three four flyer is a bit overcosted, but the fact that you gain two life for each gate you control. Um, and that it's very easy to play in a five color deck, make this a very nice payoff for a slower uh, controlling guild he uh, guild gate heavy deck. Since um, a lot of your lands uh, come into play tapped, having a way uh, to recoup some of that tempo by gaining back the life that you sort of paid with for uh, your fixing by taking damage uh, while setting up. Uh, makes this a pretty nice card and the three four stats uh, make it a pretty solid blocker the turn it comes down and should probably be able to hold the air against most creatures next we have a rester seal um, this is a very solid trick basically one mana plus two plus two until end of turn is a pretty decent rate for a combat trick these days in limited and the addendum that it um, yeah, if you play it during a main phase, it gives you a creature flying, means that you can also use it as like an evasive finisher. If you have a if you have a creature that could uh, kill the opponent with the plus two plus two from Zeal, you can just play a pre-combat and fly over the opponent's defenses potentially. But that's more of a fringe use. So Heart seems like a decent role player in limited, but not uh, too great. Depends a bit on how aggressive. Azorius is going to end up like this card for example seems like it would have been amazing in Boros in Guild of Ravnica not sure um, how good it's going to end up being in Azorius in comparison I would assume at least worse but probably still at least playable next we have Bring to Trial another limited common uh, no need to really discuss this for Constructed I think it's just a bit too expensive and conditional but in limited this seems like a pretty uh, solid removal um, depends a bit on how the whole format is gonna uh, shake out how main deckable it is but if it's good it's great like three, uh, three mana removal for big guys is a pretty good card that kills most big guys um, making sure that you're not getting run over or that you can break through again so this is at least going to be a great sideboard card and probably at least fine as a one-off in main decks um, unless the format ends up that there's very few um, big creatures that are going to end up in uh, decks a lot of the time. But yeah, uh, all in all, a good effect to cost ratio. If you think about Color the Culprit, which does um, the this, which destroys instead of exiles and is toughness uh, four or more instead of uh, power and is an instant but also costs one more this is very comparable but the fact that it exiles actually matters quite a bunch for cards like the mythic that we saw earlier but also for uh, bigger afterlife creatures for example and uh, the power for uh, restriction makes it a bit more of a defensive card than call out a corporate which is better at getting rid of annoying low attack high power uh, high toughness blockers next we have civic stalwart another limited only card but a pretty good one i think and a card that looks like um they're trying to push wide for more uh yeah aggressive strategies uh in limited at least from the cards we talked about so far um a four cost three three basically a hill giant is usually still pretty decent and limited even these days even though they they often come with like an extra stat point or ability these days but so does this one so it is at least a very solid four drop usually i think especially if your deck is um, more proactive more aggressive um, giving uh, your creatures plus one plus one until end of turn when this comes down both lets you um, keep attacking better into uh, the opponent's creatures on curve and 
also makes sure that even if your draw is late with a with a bigger board, it still has more impact than a normal hill giant would have, for example, and also pairs nicely with the afterlife tokens once again to deal a bunch of extra damage in the air and so on. So it seems like a very solid uh, white common in limited. Next we have Concordia Pegasus. I mean, two mana, one threes are often already okay if the um, other two drops line up well against it and your deck is defensive enough and getting a two cost one three flyer is a pretty good rate in limited um, in both defensive and aggressive decks especially if you have ways to make the flying body uh, into more of a threat with other ways of buffing like for example the uh, exaltation that we uh, looked at earlier is uh, pairing really nicely with something like Concordia Pegasus. Next we have Exposed to Daylight, um, destroy target artifact or enchantment, cry one for three. It is a bit clunky and a bit expensive, and I doubt there will be enough targets for this to be main deckable, but it's your typical uh, draft sideboard card, and too weak for constructed. Next we have for Bidding Spirit, it's a 3 mana 3-3, three, three. double cost, so not that easy to support, and generates sort of uh, some nice combat tempo in a way. When <clears throat> Forbidding Spirit enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, unless the controller pays 2 for each of those creatures. So it basically is a 3 mana 3-3 three, three that gives you a ghostly prison uh, for one turn, so to speak. Um, so yeah, this um, is pretty good and limited, I think. Like, it is better in a defensive deck against aggressive decks because um, it hurt the, the summon effect, hurts them a lot more. But then again, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with an upside um, is still a really good deal in an aggressive deck a lot of the time. So... I can see this making it into most white decks, really. It, uh, it's definitely a pretty strong uncommon in limited, I would think. And I could even see this uh, having some appeal in standard in constructed, simply because it really shuts down aggressive legs. Like, this looks pretty good against um, the white aggro decks in standard, because they're not very good at getting rid of this, and they have a lot of small bodies, so it will basically um, force them to skip an entire combat, which can be very devastating, especially if it's going into their um, uh, history of Benalia turn and stuff like that. So, ironically, a white card that uh, sort of counters the white weenie decks and standard uh, nicely and, yeah, seems like uh, a potential nice sideboard card to just kind of stabilize the board early against them. Not sure if we're going to end up with a deck that actually wants this over other cards, but it's definitely a, seems like a good tool there. And um, who knows, maybe there's enough uh, general use and payoff for it that there would be, I don't know, some kind of um, mid-rangey creature deck that is a bit bigger that could even consider this main deck, but it's probably a bit too vanilla uh, too often uh, for that. Next we have Haster Officer, another limited only card, another card that kind of pushes uh, proactiveness, aggression in uh, limited in white. His 3 costs 3-2, three, which is fine, not great, but a decent role player uh, to fill out your curve. And then when it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one this turn, uh, making this actually pretty nice because it allows you to drop to uh, often attack into the opposing uh, creature without either without trading or uh, with trading up both is pretty good um, so either you push damage or you force the opponent to make a bad trade and get a decently a decent aggressive uh, body so yeah uh, should make uh, should do a nice job in a more aggressive white decks if your deck is not very aggressive uh, this is probably pretty underwhelming and uh, uh, might be better options. 
Next we have Hero of Precinct 1. Uh, this record would definitely a bunch of constructed implications. First off, um, in standard, this uh, might fit nicely into Selesnia tokens because there is a bunch of multicolor cards and generating free tokens is amazing in that deck. And it's a great 2-drop. Uh, pairs well with the Selesnia 2-drop that makes tokens. So now there's like 8 2-drops that make tokens, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, there might even be other uses for this. Like uh, if there are controlling decks that have a critical enough mass of uh, multicolor cards, they could even consider running this in the sideboard against lower to the ground decks and stuff like that. It's just a pretty strong card if you can support it and could easily go into various strategies. Even in modern, I think this should be good enough to make it into uh, into humans potentially, at least in the sideboard, but probably more likely in the main deck because it's more generically powerful than specific. And yeah. Then, since the tokens are humans, it's really powerful because they all get buffed by Talia's lieutenant. And yeah, more more boosts to the already strong humans in modern. Uh, and then limited, of course, a two cost two two is usually at least fine. And then if your deck has a bunch of multicolor cards to support this, this uh, gets pretty good pretty fast. Next we have impassioned. Orator, another 2 cost 2-2. Two, two. Uh, in this case, when another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So it's only for your creatures making this impact and uh, making this effect a lot less impactful than uh, similar cards in the past, like um, the 1-1 one, one elf for one that uh, gave you one life or soul warden. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> I mean a 2 cost 2-2. Two, two, is usually still a decent card in limited, and this should uh, once again. Oh, sorry about that. Should have some nice synergy with um, the afterlife effect, the tokens from afterlife, and other uh, token generating stuff. And yeah, especially if your deck is not that aggressive, the ability can um, make a significant difference. In an aggressive deck, you probably uh, will find better 2-drops than a 2-cost two 2-2 two two, since the ability is is barely relevant. It can sometimes help a bit in a race, but all in all, not very impressive. Next we have <coughs> Justicia's Portal. Um, you exile target creature you control, then return the card to the battlefield under its owner's control. It gains first strike until end of turn. Um, bit of a weird card, honestly, since um, basically if you use this mid-combat, the exiling removes the creature from combat, so the first strike isn't relevant there. So the first strike is not very often going to matter, or it's either like one or the other is going to matter. Like either you're going to phase out a creature and um, and use it to like negate a removal spell or something and make the creature survive, and then a lot of the time the first strike won't matter, or you blink a creature to blow out the opponent, the attacking opponent, with first strike. Um, the ideal scenario, obviously, is you have a tapped creature that you blink with this, it gets untapped from the blinking, and then it gets first strike, and then you block the opponent, uh, yeah, surprise block the opponent and blow them out with the first strike. But half the time, at least, probably it will only be blinking to save a creature or re-trigger and enter the battlefield effect, or yeah, blink a creature to give it first strike on defense to uh, block an opposing creature and kill it. But yeah, the card has a lot of flexibility, so uh, seems like a decent one-off in limited and a nice sideboard card in additional copies uh, against the right opponent, and obviously goes up in value if I have a lot of um, effects that you can uh, can rebuy with the blink. Stuff. It's kind of an interesting spin on the blink, since if it would just untap and give first strike, it would still have the same combat applications, but lose a lot of the other utility. So yeah, kind of an interesting, flexible, uh, neat tool there for white. But one that works much better defensively than offensively. 
Next we have Knight of Sorrows, an auto of card. It's a 5 cost 3-3 three, three, and block an additional creature each combat and it has afterlife 1. That card's pretty underwhelming and limited, I think. 5 cost 3-3 three, three is a pretty bad rate. Blocking addition, an additional creature as a 3-3 three, three is also not very impressive and afterlife 1 only makes up for so much. So I would assume this is um, more often than not kind of too bad and limited and will not make the cut or you will at least be pretty unhappy having to have this in your deck I think. And last but not least for part one we have Lumbering Battlement, another rare. It's a 5 cost 4-5 Vigilance which is already a pretty solid um, rate for um, for the cost. And when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-token creatures you control until it leaves the battlefield. So it's kind of just um, yeah, exiling your own stuff to give itself plus two plus two. And then once uh, it dies, the creatures come back. So you can basically just kind of temporarily eat um, your creatures, some of your creatures that you might not need at the moment because they're not impactful enough to make this into a massive threat. And if the opponent then deals with that threat, they just come back. Um, obviously has the nice bonus if you have some enter the battlefield abilities or leaves battlefield abilities that you can uh, trigger them with this um, and yeah, get the enter the battlefield effects again when this comes back. So in limited, this seems like a very strong five drop. In constructed, not sure if there's any way to abuse it. Um, this is definitely the kind of card that is either I think too slow and too bad and uninteresting in constructed unless there's a way to sort of break it and do some busted combo -y stuff with it and then it's uh, yeah gonna be a deck defining card. Uh, right now I don't see any like actual combo stuff or obvious ways to build the deck that wants this and break it. So uh, for now I would assume it's not gonna be very relevant to constructed but who knows, maybe someone comes up with some cool combo at some point and uh, proves me wrong. Um, or if you have any idea what what to do with this thing constructed that I am missing, let me know in the comments down below. Also, this concludes part one of the series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will be back tomorrow with part two. I plan on doing one part a day, just like I did with um, the last eternal set and the first artifact set so stay tuned for um, more daily reviews and yeah if you guys enjoy the content hit the like button subscribe to the channel turn on the notification icon to not miss out on future content and also please consider whitelisting youtube to help support the free content um, that's it again for this time i'll be back with the second part of the white ravnica legion scouts thanks for watching everyone I'm your host, Manuel, and bye.